What is up YouTube? I'm back with another episode, another scintillating car talk episode of myself saying whatever comes to my head, whatever comes out of my mouth, whatever I feel like dispelling onto the world. <laughs> All this wisdom that's just locked away that I sometimes struggle to to verbalize and to vocalize and to be able to speak the words, but I know it's in there. It's just crying to come out. It's desperate to come out. Um, what are we on today? Thursday, the 15th of February, the day after Valentine's, two days after Shrove Tuesday here in the UK. I've never understood that one, Pancake Tuesday. Is that a thing anywhere else or is that just the UK where we all make pancakes and eat pancakes for, for tea, for dinner? It's a random, what a random, what's the word I'm looking, tradition. We have a lot of random traditions in this country. Uh, there's so many bizarre, weird things that go on. One of the most bizarre, I'm uh, thinking back to my days when I was a sales rep uh, back in the 90s. I stayed with a colleague, I went to visit a colleague who lived down in Devon, and he lived in a little town called Ottery St. Mary. Now we were there over the bonfire night weekend, which in itself is a very strange tradition, celebrating the, the downfall of the gunpowder plot that they didn't blow up Parliament. Guy Fawkes and the conspirators. So bonfire night, big tradition in the UK and other Commonwealth countries, I think, but nowhere else is that celebrated. But in this particular town, Ottery St. Mary in Devon, they have an altogether completely left field, off the scale, um, unusual celebration that takes place every 5th of November. And it's called the burning of the barrels. Now what they do, if you, are fortunate or unfortunate enough, depends on how you see it, to have lived in this town or you were born in this town. It's a rite of passage for you that you get to don a barrel on your back and run amok through the town on bonfire night. Now that doesn't sound too bad, does it? It's literally just a huge big beer barrel. The big grown up burly men and women, it's not, this is not a sexist thing, women do this as well, and kids. You get kids who start early in the night with smaller barrels. But by the time you get into the, the, the depths of the evening, you've got these guys who've got these huge big barrels on the back. And they run around the town and it is a spectacle. It's absolutely jam-packed. You can't move. If you get into the street, because all the pubs will put tables outside and they'll sell beer and, and serve you that way. Um, and it's just rammed. It's absolutely rammed. There's a public firework display. There's a bonfire. There's, there's a fairground, there's rides, there's shows, attractions, stalls. You can buy hot dogs. It's just, it's just insane. It is really off the charts. But there's a catch. The barrels that these guys and girls and boys and girls are carrying are on fire. <laughs> They're flaming fire. So if one of them comes towards you, you feel the heat. You feel it. All the shops board their windows up. Everything gets boarded up. So nobody takes any chances on this 5th of November. So why did I start talking about that? That's just a very unusual tradition that I witnessed once and I was completely blown away with the spectacle. We have a lot of weird, weird, bizarre traditions in the UK. And maybe it's that as this channel grows, if I manage to last the course with this channel, um, I'll try and visit. I'll probably, I'll try and do a lot of these weird and wonderful things. I missed out on on Pancake Day, because there was a, a village not far from here, there was a mass football game. Well, you're talking a football match with a soccer ball for Americans. Sorry, not NFL football, football. And this village, um, when I say village, you're talking maybe 300 people each side. And you start one end of the town, one end of the village, and you start one end and the other end, and there's two goals. And the winner is the first one to get the ball by hook or crook, by punch, nip, however you want to do it get the ball to the other end of the town and into the goal there's a lot of these football matches take place but there was there's one not too far from me and i missed a trick i should have gone and done that so maybe that's something for the future i'll start chronicling and recording all these weird traditions that we have in the uk that are centuries centuries old that just continue to this day rolling cheeses down hills <laughs> rolling yourself down hills in some quite bizarre spectacle as well. There's so many weird and wonderful events that happen in the UK that it would be amazing to uh, to take my phone around or my camera uh, and show that. I may even join in with some of them, if I'm allowed. The burning barrels down in Ottery St. Mary, I would not be allowed as I understand it, because I'm not, I'm not a citizen. I wasn't born there. I wasn't born in the town. I wasn't, I, I think there is a criteria for you to do that. Not that I want to do that anyway. 
I'll be honest with you, the thought of running riot with a, a, a barrel soaked in tar all year, because that's what they do, they soak these barrels in tar, and then when it gets and becomes dusk on bonfire night, they, they set fire to them, and you pick it up with two big Hessian gloves and run riot and run into people. The injury, St. John's Ambulance are all over the, this village, this town on the night. The amount of injuries must be insane. So I'm back. I've had a bit of a, a respite. I haven't done any YouTubes for a few days. Although I've put my attention back to doing a couple of shorts. I've, I've looked at my TikTok and thought I could be doing a lot more with TikTok than I am. I started out, I used to tell a lot of jokes on TikTok and they were okay. They were, you know, they weren't really taking off and I wasn't really getting much sort of feedback on that. And so I've deleted all of them and I'm now starting with TikTok again and I'm now doing what I'm pretty good at, which is producing motivational content. So if you hop over onto my TikTok, Britman Speaks, you'll see the last two TikToks I've put up there are just general motivational short videos, like a minute long. Uh, I enjoy doing, I enjoy producing them uh, with Photoshop and whatever else I use to do that. AI, AI is a big thing now, you can't say that it's not because that's now aiding the process of being able to be, be a creator in 2024. I'm falling short, I know that, I'm not exactly where I want to be right now. But I'm trying guys, I really am, I don't, I feel as though my skill base and everything that I've got to offer here can produce something meaningful online and I'm, I'm giving it a go if I try something and it doesn't work I'll pull the plug on it and I'll, I'll, I'll discontinue with that but the one thing I won't do is quit I will not quit on this I won't quit on the YouTube channel I know I spoke the other day about maybe getting to 100 episodes and then assessing where we're at and see if it feels oh it's I'm justified in continuing or not I just want to make a success of this. I want to get to a point where I think I'm so glad I stuck the course. I'm so glad I stayed the path. I'm so glad I didn't bin it off because it's far too easy to walk away thing, from things in life because they're just not panning out or they're not working out maybe the way you hoped or the way you'd, you'd, you'd wanted them to. But you've got to be patient. Online content creation is an ultra distance marathon. It's not a 60 meter dash. It's it's a long, 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 long process. And you've got to be in it for the long haul. If you want to get to that finish line and cross the line knowing that you've achieved what you set out to achieve, grind your teeth, grit, it, grit your teeth, stick in and just head down and just plow on and just get it done. No excuses, no mistakes. You've just got to do it. And this is what I'm telling myself. I'm saying this out loud because I'm telling myself this, that this is what I need to do. I need to get rid of the negative voices in my head because I've had quite a few negative voices the last few days. I'll be honest with you. I've had one or two voices saying to me, quit, it's not working. You know, nobody's watching, you know, other than your mum and Tom. <laughs> Hiya, Tom. Hello, Tom's friend Andy, by the way. Tom asked me to give Andy down in Oxford for a shout out. So... If it's right that you're watching, Andy, thanks for watching. At least I know that there's three bona fide people watching my content. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, viral, baby, viral. I'm going to finish today. I don't want to go too much. This is going to be quite a short episode today. It's literally going to be what you're watching now. And I want to re what's the word? recite one of my favourite poems of all time. I'm actually... I like reading literature and I like reading old literature and I've always been a big fan of old writing and, and poetry, anything that's inspirational, anything that's motivational to me and it means a hell of a lot to me. This poem that I'm going to finish my, episode, my short episode today with um, meant a great deal to me and it still does to be honest. It's a poem called Don't Quit by a British American poet called Edgar Guest who poet laureate at one stage in America he was also the people's poet um, and this this resonates with me in so many places it's a poem that I used to look at often on my road to Everest because when I before I finally went to Everest in 2014 it wasn't clear cut that I was going to get there in the first place I had so many hurdles to overcome financial was the main one I just for years and years I was never able to get anywhere near uh, getting to the mountain because I just couldn't afford to go and I remember my mum gave me this poem once and she cut it out of a newspaper and, and sent me it and gave me it in a card and this was years ago now you're probably talking I don't know 2000 2001 so 23 years ago and it stayed with me ever since and it's I stuck it in my journal so when I finally did go off to Everest um, I had this this poem writ, uh, printed out and stuck inside the front of my journal so I could see it on a daily basis and I could look at it 
And it just reminded me that life is hard and life is tough and there's nothing guaranteed in life. Nothing. You know, you've got to stick in and you've got to grind. Nobody's going to do it for you. And I get that. You know, life is tough. Life is hard. As Rocky Balboa said, life isn't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place at times. It doesn't matter how tough you are. Sometimes you've just got to give in to it and just go and just, just, you know, don't let the bastards grind you down, basically. Because there's so much toxic negativity out there and people will try and derail you. That whole tall poppy syndrome where nobody wants you to be higher than them. Nobody wants you to be achieving better than them in life. You know, there's a lot of jealous people, a lot of insecure people, and we don't like seeing people being successful, so we'd rather pull them down or chop the top off the poppy, as tall poppy syndrome refers to. So I'm gonna to finish today by reciting this poem, um, Don't Quit. I don't know if anybody's, it's a popular poem. You probably know it, you might have heard it. If not, then I hope it's one that you'll remember, and I hope for whoever gets to the end of this YouTube video today, you'll remember it and you'll go and look it up and you'll print it out, frame it stick it on your wall it's available on etsy framed people are already selling this because it's probably well out of copyright so that's probably okay to do that but it's very inspirational and it helped me through a lot of low periods of my life uh, even now i mean i don't mind admitting i'm in a bit of a low at the minute and i look to this poem and it just the words that scream off the page just inspire me so much so enough rabbiting on let's finish with that today and i'll recite don't quit by Edgar A. Guest. I love it and I hope you do too. When things go wrong as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low but the debts are high and you want to smile but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must but don't you quit. Life is strange with its twists and turns as every one of us sometimes learns. And many failures turn about when we might have won had we stuck it out. Don't give up though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. Success is failure turned inside out. The silver tint of the clouds of doubt. You can never tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems so far. So stick to the fight when you're hardest hit. It's when things seem worse that you must not quit. I love that. Anyway, live this life you love, love the life you live. That'll do it for YouTube for today. Go and check out my shorts on TikTok or on YouTube. I've actually put them on here as well. So if you click into my shorts, not my short shorts, but my short videos, you'll see the two motivational videos I've just done.